Introduce yourself to the world, let the streets know who you is, where you from, and what you got coming. So what's up? My name is Kel Damo. I'm based out of the DFW area, you know, the Dallas, Texas area. I'm originally from Ankeny, Iowa, um, but, you know, I moved to Dallas three years ago. Um, and stuff I got coming, I got a single car Mardi Gras dropping this Friday, 12-11. So be on the lookout for that. It's going to be crazy. Talk about that a little bit. Why the, why the title Mardi Gras? So um, when I was making the song, you know, part of my creative process is I just come up with melodies and then, you know, come up with the work based on how I'm feeling. So when I was making the record, um, I kind of just, it, it just, it just struck me as kind of like a party, like, like a song that you would play. Like the vibe I had in my mind was like, you know, people, you know, at like maybe an event or some sort of festival or something, you know, a late, a late night type of vibe, you know what I'm saying? When they, people out in the city getting lit. And the first right. thing that came to Mardi Gras, and I was just, it just that, that just fit the vibe in my mind, you know, of the song. It was just like, you know, a dope, you know, nightlife experience kind of thing. So I just thought of Mardi Gras. And I named it that. Kill Domo on the back streets. I appreciate you rocking with me. Why your name? Where did you get that from? So my middle name. So my, my real name is Kelvin Dominic Isoe. So okay. Kelvin, so you got Kel and then Domo. My actual middle name is spelled D-O-M-I-N-I-C-K. But I always write a D-O-M-O -O for some reason. I've always done that. So um, one of my homies, I was trying to come up with a name because I used to be called Young Ice, so I didn't really like that. So I told him, I was like, yo, help me come up with a name where if someone calls me that in public, I'll like, you know, I'll recognize it. I'll be like, oh, I can take that. He said, Kel Damo. And I was like, all right, bet. That's what we're going with. So that's what you ran. And talk about it a little bit where you're from. I'm from H-Town, but I know you're from Texas, right? You said Iowa. I'm, I'm, I live in Dallas, Texas, but okay. I was born in Ames, Iowa, and I spent most of my life in Ankeny, Iowa. Mm. Real quick, t tell people what it was like growing up in Iowa. I know that's kind of upstate. A lot of people don't really come from Iowa and do this music shit. So what it was like coming up in uh, Iowa? Um, you know, so it was a small, it, it was a small, um, it's a small, like the city I'm from is a, it's a small city, so um, a small suburb. So it was kind of, I used to be into basketball. I still play basketball, but basketball is my main hustle. So one of the biggest, one of the things I learned from the jump was that it being a small city, I had to work harder to get, you know, exposure. And a lot of people, you know, were kind of telling me, yo, you know, you're from Ankeny, you're from Iowa, no one's going to notice you. But it was kind right. of me from such a small city. That kind of, you know, instilled in me that, yo, you know, you got to work hard, you know, especially because you're so, from such a small city to get out there. So when I moved yeah. to Dallas, you know, I still had that hard work mentality. And now you put me in an environment where the city's bigger, there's more opportunities. It just, you know, the sky's the limit. So on top of that, I have a lot of friends and family from Iowa. My family is originally from um, Tanzania, Africa. And a lot of people there are also from Tanzania, Africa in our little, little community. So a lot of people, shout out to all of them. I call them my family. They really are my family. Most of them have played a huge part in raising me. So it was just a big kind of family kind of vibe back in Iowa. And, you know, um, dope, I played dope. a big who I am. Dope. So what got you into music? Um, what got me into music was... Uh, just the, what got me into music, I would say, is the fact that something I create has an impact on people. You know what I'm saying? So I got into music in around sixth grade, but I started taking it really serious in ninth grade. Um, and so at that point, I was seeing people's reaction to my songs, either them just enjoying it or people telling me, you know, how much my songs have impacted them and how it got them through certain things. So... Me getting that feedback let me know that, yo, you know what I'm saying, you have a bigger purpose here, bigger than yourself. And so that kind of what keeps me going and got me into it. Do you plan on signing? Are you independent? What's the label situation like? Because I know I was talking to, uh, I think, your manager. I don't know who that was particularly, but shout out to him. Uh, but what's the label situation like? Are we independent? Okay. Uh, what's the latest single or the song that you're pushing? Oh, um, so we're currently pushing a single, my new single, Mardi Gras, that's coming out this Friday. Um, it's, it's, like I said, it's a dope, you know, it gives me like a night, a night vibe, co college party kind of vibe, you know, a festival kind of vibe, you know, it's a lit track. Um, it's probably going to be my coldest track to date. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it out there right now and it's, it's going to do really well. Talk about Gumbo, man. I know it's about a year old, but talk about what inspired that track. Compare Gumbo? Yeah. Okay. So I was most, for the people who know me. 
I started off in music doing a little bit more of like the boom bap kind of sound, you know, the lyrical, the rapping, whatever it is. So, I, I, you know, I picked, I heard the beat and I just started, you know, writing and I just started, I just wanted a track where I could spaz lyrically on it, you know, cause I was into really showcasing my lyrical ability. So that was really the inspiration behind Gumbo. And so I was just talking about, you know, stuff trying to go kill the track. And then my little brother um, who also makes music, his name is uh, Keegan Isoe. Um, he actually came up with the name. I was like, yo, give me something wild, like potato salad or something like that. Like how, you know, Tyler Creator and, and ASAP did. He just thought of gumbo. I said, perfect. We're going to name it that. And just, that's, that, that's what it ended up being. I feel that. I feel that. What's 2021 looking like for you as far as the music? Oh, the 2021 is, is, is my year to really take things to the next level. You know, every year we really um, aspire to improve. So every year, um, this year was more of, you know, the quality of the music. Uh, last year was last year was just getting started. You know, the year this year, you know, it's the more of the quality of the music. Um, and next year is the content. So you're going to see a lot more visuals. Hopefully the COVID thing shuts down. It doesn't, doesn't shut anything else down. You'll see a lot more live performances. And you'll just see a lot more of me, basically, a lot more bigger opportunities and platforms that I plan on being on. So just a lot more of Damo, basically. I feel that. Talk about BBS a little bit. Oh, so VV's, that's that's a fan favorite. Um, VV's is a track that I did. I dropped around June this year. You know, it was, it was a summer track. Um, and it's just, you know, it was just me talking my stuff. It was just me, you know, wanting to go on a track and have a little fun um, and just really go off and make a lit track for people to enjoy. That would have been, that would have went crazy in a live setting. But, you know, we we, we going we to we definitely rock out to when we can. I feel that I feel it. Do you have a dream collab on anybody dead or alive you want to work with? Oh, for sure. Kendrick Lamar. Oh, okay. So you do a, a remake with him. Uh, is that your favorite artist? Yeah, it's my favorite artist. I feel that. I feel that. Uh, you say, Texas, how long have you been in the DFW area? Um, Three years, since 2017. Okay. And how long have you been doing music professionally, taking it serious? Um, Approaching three years now. Approaching three years. Is, is it paying off for you? Are you uh, hitting bumps in the road, or is it is it doing what you wanted to do? Um, it's doing what I wanted to do, but of course, anything in life that you pursue that isn't it's conventional or isn't something that, like you know, to make it in music is rare. So you you gonna always have bumps in the road. You're gonna always have like, COVID's the bump in the road, but you know you have people doubting you sometimes. But my my thing was always you know I came from a small city. I came from a place where odds are always stacked against me and that never stopped me that never messed up my mindset so i for me i always say i'll never let somebody else influence or dictate my future you know it's up to me whether i make it or not i wouldn't want me listening to someone else's opinion hinder me from reaching my goals because you never know um the, the more work i put in if i ignore the haters then you know and i make it i'll be much more happy that i actually listen to myself and if I listen to them to be quote unquote cool or not clowned by people or whatever it is, I just do me. I feel, like it, I feel like you just do you. So could you drop some advice to the artists? Um, for sure. Uh, definitely don't. I'll, I'll give you three pieces of advice. Um, don't get complacent. You know what I'm saying? When the opportunities come, understand that there's more where that comes from if you keep putting in the work. Um, always look to revolutionize, always look to take things to the next level and do things that people either don't think you can do or things that you've never done before. And three, don't let anybody else's limitations dictate your actions. You know what I'm saying? Do what you want to do, what you're capable of doing, and be willing to put in the work and do things that other people might find weird, that other pe people might not understand. Be willing to do whatever it takes. Those are the three pieces of advice I'll give What inspired God with us? Oh, that's probably my favorite song to uh, that I have out. I love that song, man. You was deep, got deep on there. Yeah, that song was very personal for me because um, it was it, it was me. Like I said, that was kind of a song for me, you know, kind of dictating or kind of describing my mindset when I when I first got into music or when I first mm -hmm. got into doing things. So it was basically me saying, you know, me me talking to God, basically saying, you know, bless my steps when I make this walk. Bless my checks when I make it all. Bless everything and keep my head strong from who see weakness and kindness. Got to ask, reveal who meant wrong. So reveal who um, don't have my best intentions. You know, reveal mm -hmm. that and, and help me to move past that. Help me to ignore them, but also help me to be a voice. Help me to be a vessel. Use me, basically, and help me to keep going when things get tough. So it was really 
it was like it was like it was almost like a prayer to God, but almost like a reminder to me that right. you know, what I'm saying you have a purpose bigger than yourself. So that that track's so special to me, to be honest. Man, it's a, it's a it's a warm track. When I heard it, I was like, damn, it was deep. So I just wanted to know what inspired it, what influenced. Just a dope track. Like I said, keep keep pushing, or whatever the case may be. Uh, last meal on death row, what it would it be? Last meal on death row. Uh. It's an African food. It's a Tanzanian food and Kenyan food. It's called chapati. Okay. It's one of my, my, my mom makes it. You know, people in, in my community make it. I love it a lot. That's probably my favorite food, to be honest. What is it? What does it consist of? School or some backstreet for cold, man, for the people that's watching? You said what? What is, like, what is, what does that dish consist of? Oh, chapati is like a, it's not a tortilla, but it, it's in the shape of a tortilla. And it's, it's, think of like a, 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 a a tortilla, basically. Think of that, but it's a little sweeter. On a more serious note, what has been your whole take on the George Floyd and Breonna Taylor situation? Oh man, that's very. It was very depressing. I, I got I got really down when when I was seeing it because it's kind of like, you know what? What a lot of people don't understand is that, um, those these kind of things happen on a daily basis, but they be on the DL. You know, they don't be on. They don't always be portrayed on the news. So when when COVID shut everything down, it gave people time to pay attention. Okay, this is what's been happening. And you know, um, now that social media is really, really prominent, it gave people, it, it, COVID sat people down and the media put the camera in front of them and said, this is what's going on. So on a global basis, everyone saw it. People had different reactions. And for me, it was kind of like, it just kind of hit more different. Cause I was like, yo, at any point, this could be me. This could be my brother. This could be my sister. This be any one of my you know my people purely just because of the color of our skin purely because of maybe how I dress how I talk whatever it is they they, they might not even get the chance get the chance to know me they just see you know a dude in a hoodie or dude in a, a do-rag whatever it is and think the worst and I've seen it I've seen it you know with my with my eyes I've seen you know I've been profiled I've been all that stuff so you know having it happen to me before and then also seeing you know the extremities of it and how bad it can get and also knowing that it happens on a daily basis and it could happen to anybody that I know, including myself, it just anger, just a whole wave of emotions. It's just a sad thing. I feel that. One more before we get out of here, man. Talk about the Cold Red EP. Cold oh, Red, um, that was the EP I dropped last year, around the same time, December 20th, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it was, a, it, was, it was my first body of work that I take pride in. You know, there was one before that, but we ain't going to talk about that. But... <laughs> Um, with the Cold Red EP, it was, you know, my first body of work that I wanted to give my fans, you know, an opportunity to, you know, to, enjoy, you know, have a body of work for me. But I, I took it a little step further and I, I tried to um, tell a narrative of a story that of where where I was, you know, um, about a year, a year prior to, you know, the release of that. And I was in a, I was in a really dark place. Um, I was filled with a lot of aggression and anger towards the world and a lot of, you know, just just hatred and just just depression, a whole bunch of bad feelings. And I tried to, um, you know, put it through the music, but also, you know, make lit music. So it, 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 it almost um, was symbolic to how I was feeling because I masked the depression with right. happiness. I masked the depression with smiling and going out and being happy and doing this. And but deep down, I'm in pain, you know, deep down, and people can see, you know, because you can't hide it. I appreciate you for rocking with Backstreet Chico. Let the people know where they can tap in and follow and uh, plug your YouTube and your IG real, real quick. All right, so what's up? My name is Kel Damo. Y'all can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Real Kel Damo. So R E A L K E L D O M O. YouTube and all streaming platforms, including SoundCloud, you can find my music. Just look up Kel Space.